In this short section, I want to revisit the two small scene and show how to evaluate the lighting and make potential problems visible. Here I duplicate the light once each on the x-axis. In subjects like jewelry, it often takes multiple lights to create a certain lighting mood and then more to achieve specific reflections. All these lights add up at the points where they overlap. This is sometimes hard to see, especially if the area is very reflective. Blender comes with a tool to display the strength of the lighting. You can find it in the render properties at the bottom of the color management section. Switch the view transform from filmic to false color. In the rendering the false colors show the current situation. Red areas are actually already overexposed, but mostly still okay. If the areas become white, then there is already a strong overexposure. As already mentioned, such situations occur in areas where several light sources overlap. Here, even a few lights and low light intensity are enough to worsen the situation. I set one of the three lamps to 20 milliwatts so that we get a total of 40 milliwatts. This is clearly already too much. There is nothing else to do here. I just wanted to show this way to evaluate the lighting situation. I would like to point out here once again, it is of great importance to use realistic sizes for realistic results. Let's take a ring as an example. In the real world, it will be anything between 1 and 3 centimeters in size. Surely you can model it in Blender with 2 meters size, but the achievable results will be rather modest. I'll start by setting the render output again, since the scene has changed. After I have set the render output again, we will finally look at the render settings. Let's start with the render properties section. Of course, this is only about the settings for cycles. If available, the dedicated GPU should be used. In the sampling section we find settings for the render viewport, which I usually leave as they are. The no eyes can be switched on, but for my taste it doesn't help that much with this small number of samples and the viewport is built up much slower. The default settings for the renderer are 32 samples. This is quite sufficient for many situations. However, as soon as retraced transparency, refraction or caustics come into play, 32 samples are no longer sufficient. For quick shots I use something between 200 and 400 samples. However, this increases the render time significantly. I use about 1000 samples when rendering a video, because here you still have to consider the frames per second. For single frames you can use 4 to 6000 samples. I used 1000 in my video.
there is nothing more to do in the advanced section, let's turn to the light paths. In this section we define how many light bounces we have in the channels. The default values are sufficient for normal renderings. On the right with the small button, you can activate predefined presets and with the plus button, you can create your own. The preset full global illumination is the best for such projects, but even 32 is not enough for really good results. For tests I use at least 64 for all channels, at least 256 for final renderings. In the video I used 256. The next very important section is clamping, here the threshold for the maximum brightness is set, from this point on, everything else is suppressed, if the value is too low, too little light comes out of objects that should be transparent, if the value is too high, that is the brightness reduction starts too late, light spots or fireflies can appear in the scene that become larger and larger during the rendering process. The greater the number of samples during rendering, the more important the reduction of brightness over the course of the rendering. In the video, I used about 600 of the 1000 rendering samples in the clamping. For the next section I have expanded the scene a bit, it is about caustics. I added a simple thorus, created the material and set roughness and metal. The thorus should create the caustics, with filter glossy and the value 1. In principle 100% is filtered away, the value should be small, but not 0. In the properties of the lights, shadow caustics can still be activated, this must be done separately for each light, I have also used this in the video. Check both boxes. Here are all the settings in the area in the original scene. At the end we come back to the original scene. Here I have adjusted the fields for the light pass. And finally I activate shadow caustics for all surfaces. That was basically all the settings for the rendering. Now, the BSDF glass still doesn't look really realistic. For this we need an extended shader. I'll show you how to do that in part 3. We'll build the shader together step by step.